Go to work, go to work. And we are back indeed. Go to work, go to work. I would love for you to get your pen and paper together because today's segment is going to be so profound that you're going to wish you would have taken notes. We have the one and only Reverend Shaw for his segment on the Go to Work radio show. And here we go. Let's go to work. Amen. How you doing today? I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Uh, you know, just working and trying to be blessed every day. And thankful that you bring me on to your show every week. And we do a segment and talk about issues of the community. And and uh, But, you know, I more appreciate you for us being able to talk about the serious issues on what's going on in mental health as I represent the CC. HR, which is the Citizens Commission on Human Rights, which is a watchdog group that exposes psychiatric abuse. I know in this first segment we don't talk about some other things and we don't theorize, but I just, you know, want everybody to understand what we say on this segment has nothing to do with CCHR, but I put a plug in because I want people going to the website, look it up, cchrint.org, and find it out with that's all about because that is not conspiracy. That is not a theory. That is true. Gotcha. Go to work. Go to work. Absolutely. All right. So with that in mind, what you got for us today, Reverend Shaw? Well, you know, we, we, we've been dealing with some of these issues. Uh, you know, we all are trying to find out if we are wise, uh, who's right and wrong, uh, what is the best choice for the black community? Uh, some of the theories are that there's some type of internal war going on uh, in the political arena. Some people think that this is connected to pedophilia. Uh, I'm just, you know, you asked me to come on the show and talk about these things, and I am well at first in the theory. I do not want anybody saying that you know, I use this as the gospel. I just look at all of the information and say, mm, just like everybody else. And because so many people are interested in this, then I'm willing to talk about it today with you. Go to work. All right. So with that in mind, I'm taking my notes. Look, <laughs> So with that in mind, just know that, yes, uh, some people take things as, uh, sorry about that. What'd you say? Okay. Yes. Just some people do take things as uh, concrete. They don't think about that. People have research information or think about that. People are synthesizing and and forget about that. People are not saying that they're perfect, that this is their perspective. They have synthesized information as well based on their experiences, what they've learned, what they research as well. Mm hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, we, we have a lot of stuff going on right now, and we got to ask ourselves who is actually behind it. Mm-hmm. And nobody knows, everybody has an idea of what they think it is, but, uh, you know, we're looking at the fact that the other day I was looking at a video, and it had to deal with the fact that uh, so many people marched on our borders. And when they came to our borders, we were told that they had marched 35 to 45 days, I mean, uh, miles a day, uh, that they were hungry, and so forth. And then when we look at the camera photos, we see little kids with brand new toys, we see clean clothes, we see brand new uh, uh, brand uh, shoes, and it made me wonder how did they walk that far? How did people with a backpack walk 45 miles a day for days and then show up the border to approach it? Who told those people to do that? Right. You know, me and, me and you wouldn't be able to just make a decision that all of us are going to walk to the border. So we have to start asking ourselves how much of this is real and how much of it is orchestrated. And why would the media even do that anyway if it was not true? Mm, exactly. 
what kind of time is that? You know, people have trying to make up these things and create something that is so detrimental to the world at the, at the same point, that influences the world so deeply. Why would they take the time to do that? And, 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 and let's, let's look at a question. I was on a, a broadcast, a, a podcast with uh, Bobby Buck, mm -hmm. and it was a bunch of panelists there from some from California, some from out of state, but uh, Ben Owens, Brother Taco, you know him, yes. right? Yes. Okay. With Steve Fox, yes. he made an interesting point, and it went over most people's heads, but it didn't go over mine. Mm -hmm. He said that there was 106 shootings in L.A. County, mm -hmm. and only two were done by the police. Mm -hmm. But we're marching the police, we're looking at them as the target, and yeah, they can be abusive, yeah, they can be dishonest, yeah, they can and do have a history of killing black people uh, who are unarmed versus whites that are armed. But the truth of the matter is, if not, if you have two shootings a year, and it was not disclosed when he said that, if either shooting was justified. For example, if I shoot at the police, or I'm with a weapon running, where I can take some other person hostage, law enforcement has the ability to shoot for their protection, and the protection of life of others. Mm -hmm. So we have to be when somebody shoots at the police and gets killed, and then we probably want justice. Now it's focused on the people who are unnecessarily unarmed, uh, who are not doing anything wrong. Let us focus on those killing Let's not Mm -hmm. Every kill. Mm -hmm. We accuse, accuse people of clan activity. We accuse the police of lynching a young man. Then we found out that this young man uh, killed himself. Mm -hmm. And then the family didn't even admit mm -hmm. when all of the information was done. So all I'm asking is that we be rational and we hit the right target. Right. And when the police mess up, then they should have to be accountable. They should have to pay the price. But, because you can't be careless with the lives of people. But let us make sure that we have the very strength before we start, you know, going all off and, and demanding and setting fires and, and things like that. Let's just be right first. Then you do the appropriate protest for the situation at hand. Exactly. Exactly. Yes, there's too many um, instances or cases and situations situations that cause the issues due to the lack of communication, due to not doing due diligence of finding the proper, or shall we say, just finding the evidence. Exactly. And we don't want to be where we're always emotional. Mm -hmm. We want to be rational. Right. We want, when we say something, it's not based on our gut feeling. It's more based on what we can prove. Mm -hmm. These things are necessary and vital, you know, important, because otherwise you will contribute to your own demise and create a bigger problem trying to fix another problem. Right. Yes. And then so, since we have a situation with uh, being emotional, uh, I know, like as myself, I'm emotional as an actress, as a comedian. I, I just I'm one of these people that are, you know, uh, helpful and all those different things. So as emotional, so sometimes people that are emotional, they need outlets. So that's why I think it's imperative that uh, a lot of people that are surrounded by people who are into entertainment they have to understand that it's time that they're just being themselves where they just need somebody to talk to like listen to what i'm saying because i'm working overdrive you understand so if they're they know they're not one of them people that don't listen that that, that don't understand you know um being heard out or somebody to 
they need to, t and if you, oh my gosh, we need more outlets for people to listen. That's why I do radio. That's why I do my own filming. I do more than one podcast and so forth. But there's other people that don't know how they don't have the skills yet. So we need to provide more uh, outlets because I see in some people that you would think that they're active listeners because they're engaged in so many different things as well. But they're not a great listener and they they it's a won't. Sided situation, and I think that's where we have a lot of uh, issues. Because if I wasn't a teacher and a communicator and well aware that I need outlets and I love attention and everything, that I would be, you know, in trouble. I wouldn't be able to do all the things I do for so many different people. But there's other people out there that's just as talented, just as uh, capable, and so forth. But yet they don't have the skills and the strategies to hone in. That's why I think that there's some people that's out there, you know, doing things that they're not supposed to do because they don't have not learned how to channel their energy and their, uh, and so forth. So that's another thing that we need to educate our communities about too, because yeah, that would, uh, the statistics, like what Taco shared, I mean, and like you said, for that not to have, or maybe, you know, somebody said something else and distracted the conversation from that. But uh, that is a serious situation. That the statistic tell you, or to me, is shared about the you know since we talk about the emotions versus mental, that there is just a matter of being a vibrant being, an energetic being, and if they don't know how to hone that uh, energy, and they're dealing with, with people that don't communicate well, you know that's where people have issues, and that's where argument starts with argument. And then it escalates and so forth and, and, and so forth that they don't know how to um, bring that in. So we definitely need to get back to educating our communities as well. Absolutely. And, and uh, you know, uh, all we say we want is justice. Mm -hmm. And anytime someone, be they white, black, or indigenous, come to save us, we must look and see their motives. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I, I love the idea of Black Lives Matter, especially when you're talking about black lives. Mm -hmm. I have no quarrel with Black Lives Matter as mm -hmm. a group who is fighting for the justice of our people. Mm -hmm. Where I differ with them, but I'm not criticizing because I don't want no more divide in our community. Right. It's that while we're talking about law enforcement, how come we're not talking about the injustice to young black children in the foster care, probation, and children and mm -hmm. family services? Uh, how come we're not talking about the injustice in mental institutions where children are being killed, saying they can't breathe, choked mm -hmm. out, and murdered? Like in a real hospital, we have for me and Frederick, a young man out of Michigan, who uh, was killed in the middle of the future, and his crime was when he threw a sandwich and was a little out of control, and he was killed. Mm. But we're not investigating anything. Yeah. We're not investigating Black Lives Matter. Why all of our children are being labeled with mental disorder in disproportionate numbers to their population in the school system. Right. We have been to look at these things and look at this as systemic, not just systemic uh, racism and law enforcement. We got to be able to look how these different systems feed into the other system. So here you have our criminal justice putting kids on psychotropic drugs with ties in with the mental health, then these things are labeled on the child and it's lasting for a lifetime with the effective ability to work on the job market. And when he can't get a job, he ends up in the prison system. And we have to look at how this thing, when we talk about systemic, we got to widen the scope of what we're looking at so that we can make sure we're addressing the whole issue. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Issue. 
That's for sure. And we shall be back with another segment about mental health with the one and only Reverend Shaw. Reverend Shaw, you want to let them know where they can reach you? Yeah, they can, uh, they can me at cphrint.org. I mean, that's where they can get the information about what we do. Yes. And then, um, um, they can also reach me personally at fshawjr at yahoo.com. F Shaw, S H A W, J-R at yahoo.com. All right. All right. Thank you so very much. Go to work. Until the next time, tune in. The Go to Work Radio Show. Go to work. That far right there. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father.